It was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex-partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants. Had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo's Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. It was death. I made sure the Brain Eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? News Network with breaking news. Halcyon Helen has been murdered. Administrator Ludovico of Rizzo's refused to answer the big question on everyone's mind. Who will Spectrum Vodka's next spokesperson be? Claiming that a special investigation must be concluded first. No. Captain, hot. we have a communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. <laughs> oh, God. I did not expect to be thrown into the DSC with deadline. Dumb. Boring. Ada, let's watch something else. Ah, yes, they warned me about this. This is not an Aetherwave serial. This is a transmission. I am Administrator Ludov... Never mind. Let's just get to the point. Halcyon Helen is dead. No! Murdered. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. She better be alive. She better be alive. When I ever do that quest. When I survive myself. Halcyon Helen's dad? Oh no, the chief of the savages finally got her. Is this some kind of sick joke? <laughs> this is the freelancer we're trying to hire. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, I've been looking forward to meeting Adjutant Akande's favorite gun. Yeah. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Uh. Uh, I'm having trouble seeing the death of a two bit actor as an assault on the colony. Two bit actor? Oh, Captain. This isn't Spencer Woolrich we're talking about. This is Halcyon Helen, Princess of Periodicals, Duchess of Dramaturgy. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract. 
because I promise you, I'll win. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I can't even read this. What if you got an idea? Quit arguing or I'll start shooting. Merciful law, I think he's serious. Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You are Adjutant Akande's most reliable freelancer. If the second most powerful person in Halcyon can depend on you, then I'd like to think we can depend on you. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. Ah, oh, Inspector Gupul. I like the sound of that. I'm pleased to hear that. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Uh, 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 you seem competent. You could have dealt with this. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the administrator is politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. Oh, relax, that's nothing I can't handle. They're nothing I can't handle. That sounds better to I'm me. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. Yep, I'll see you in two months. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. Uh, I don't know why they're trusting me to catch Harley on cell and Skiller. Pronounce that right, I know. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. Yay! That's all I needed though. Finally. Oi. Welcome back. If you missed the last part, which was the final of my Let's Play, A Brave New World, I died. I died in the last boss fight, which was pretty much a permadeath run. So I guess I, I failed my permadeath run, but I still want to play the house in Helm DLC. And if I actually survive that DLC without dying, I'm gonna give myself a second chance at the boss fight. If I don't survive the DLC without dying, <laughs> it's, it's just the DLC then. And I knew this was a good boy. You're a good boy. Yeah! Halcyon Helen. I don't even know what the DLC is called. I always see the Halcyon Helen DLC. I never played it before, that's why I... Murder on Iridium North. I never played this DLC, so this will be blind. Oh. Well, from now forward, I've thrown the intro cutscene in that I've just randomly activated in the middle of my let's play. And we're gonna go to Eridanos. And We're now docked at Aerodonis's luxury landing pad. Oh, luxury. See what all the fuss is about. From what I've heard, this is the better DLC. And Pearl on Gorgon was pretty weak, so it's not that hard to be the better DLC here. I need a lot of food. Damn it, that's not food. That's food. I just threw in something else. And some more sleep because we're still on Supernova. I need to upgrade my hacking skills. That will save me. And lockpicking one more time. That will save me from 
The goddamn robot swarm. The goddamn robot swarm. I mean, I can throw in the final part of my let's play the main game right here. Holy hell! Drop dog is an organic in rest mode. Oh. <laughs> Holy hell! No! Not like this! Not like this! That looks glitched and blurry as all hell, and the audio is bad. I'm gonna talk over that because the audio is so bad. Why does this look bad as all hell? Damn, that cutscene was just horrible. Yeah, Ellie and Parvati will be the squad for this mission, for this part of the game. I won't take it too seriously. Guess we can take a screenshot here. Settings, hard off. Don't need hard at the moment. I'm gonna be heartless. How could it be so heartless? Some good loot back here. Ammo, what else is new? And you are mark free. So I guess I won't get any better weapons. Holy hell! Okay, this is cool. This is cool. I can already see why it's the better DLC. Oh. Huh. Because it's dialing. Oh, I'm falling. And I guess I don't need a face cam because it's more so a talking DLC than an action oriented. From what I've heard. But well, Peril on Gorgon should have been the action oriented one. I'll take all the screenshots. Ooh. Can I s scratch underneath? Okay. Yes, sir. I was worried for a second because the intro cutscene was so. Captain, it's beautiful up here. Can we? Can we get more jobs like this one? Just for you, Pavati. Just for you. Because I left you scarred in the very long Gorgon DLC. And Ellie is used to that luxurious German word. Luxury. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. You sound like and look like a clown. What the hell is that head? Can you fill me in on details of the murder? I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling has been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. I still don't understand why anyone would have it in for Ms. Helen. We should ask if they're comping the minibar. This might take a while if you get me. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Oh. Was she a device figure? Not particularly. But I think some folks were jealous of her success, or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. How did she get so famous? Why, she was a natural. P 
people fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. Oh. Was the product really a big deal, man? You bet it was. Rizzo's rented out the ballroom in the hotel just for the launch event. Reckoned it was going to be a real swell affair. Rizzo's ain't unveiled the product since the debut of Spectrum Ultraviolet. Invisible to the naked eye and, as it happened, prone to causing massive internal bleeding. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. I don't have those. Oh, I don't need you. Bags! What bags? Uh, you're making fun, right? Your luggage. Belongings. Kit. Wherever you keep what you ain't wearing. You're still giving me a pretty blank look. Suppose it's none of my business, but do you just wear the same set of clothes all the time? Nah, switch through when I need more lockpicking skills. Oh. Oh, I just wear whatever I strip from my enemies' corpses, honestly. <laughs> well, uh, reckon I can respect your candor even if it scares me a smidge. Good. Anyhow, I'll look for you in the grand ballroom later. Hope you can unravel this mystery, Inspector. Damn, what the hell is this hat? You look like a smurf. Got them smurf. And I can sprint again. Is that stealing already? Do I need my heart for this session? Do I know without a heart what stealing is and what not? Oh, I can take this. Oh, mine. Oh, mine. God, I need to upgrade. I want to fight the boss fight again. Ah, oh, did so bad. Holy hell. Yeah, Gorgon is nothing compared to this place. Just the shits. Look at it. Oh. I don't know why I... how many bits I've spent at the Grand Colonial? Is my patronage worth nothing to you? I'm sure you've spent a lot, sir, but unfortunately we can't make any exceptions. Can't make any exceptions. In Byzantium, those words would be a criminal offense. Shame we're not in Byzantium. Oof. Idiot. I don't know why I didn't pick up this DLC back in the day. Oh, I can actually jump through here. And decided to go with the, what they say, the still action-oriented one. Even though it truly is not. Luxury landing port. Okay. I'm gonna have to turn the music a little bit more down. Otherwise, it's covering too much of the conversations. Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find to the you. colonial right ahead. Damn, that hat looks stupid. Are you enjoying the amenities? The what? The amenities it is? Don't even know what that means. I need to eat and drink. That's what it means, right? Oh, Juna. Holy hell. Fancy place. I hope they're not expecting us to pay. You get that money, right? You're rich. That's a way I probably shouldn't go down. Anyways, I just called the elevator. Damn. Adolf.
Aren't you a fancy goddamn palace? I see the adjutant sent her own freelancer to mourn Helen's death. You know, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen. It really is a terrible shame. I absolutely adored her serials. I almost can't imagine someone wretched enough to do such a thing. You don't think a dissident could be here, do you? Get a hold of yourself. The administrator would never allow someone as dangerous as a dissident here. Eridanos is safe. This is all just a terrible coincidence. Of course, of course, you are absolutely right. I think the idea of a psychopath wandering among us is just making me nervous. I'm a psychopath. Maybe I kill everyone here after I finish the games. DLC's main quest. Oh, Sin Helen versus the Brain Eaters. Even got the elevator music, the loading screen. I wish I'd worn my muddy boots and the jacket with holes in it. Can you imagine the looks we'd get? Oh, Ellie likes it here. Who has inflicted severe emotional trauma on me? I demand a room upgrade. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing to say Early about Holcomb that. Is likely beside himself in grief. Dang, even the roof is... I'll bet you ten bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt. I believe it too, actually. Oh, come on. Why is the lounge closed? I wanted brunch. Oh, I shouldn't run around with all the hot. on Helen gone, does that mean Spencer Woolrich will get all her roles? I certainly hope not. That man doesn't even act as well as I do. Are you the same guy we talked beforehand? The crime scene's awaiting, Inspector. Ah, oh, yes. Can't believe something like this could happen in my hotel. When I found her, I was just hoping she had a little too much to drink, but all the grievous bodily injury adds up, I suppose. Oh, trying to take advantage, Mr. Bellhop. She was lying in a pool of blood when your first thought was, oh, I wonder if she's drunk. Hey, Byzantines and restraint aren't two words that often go together. Wouldn't be the first blood-soaked, unconscious party goer I've come across. Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions. Oh god, more? Did you see Helen on the day of her death? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. Oh my god. Oh wait, uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. Damn it. Sorry, Inspector, they don't pay me to think. <laughs> ah, you want to give me more details on how you came across the body? Sure, I'd taken to checking the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. You understand? Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Well, Tell ya. Thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey, now I can finally see smells. Sorry, what? <laughs> you can see smells? Okay, Patrick Suskin's perfume. Did you kill Helen? You can tell me if you did. It will be our secret. What? No. Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. I was in shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. That's a murder motive. Any idea what Helen would have been in the ballroom after hours? Beats all hell out of me. Maybe she was... Uh, practicing for the unveiling? You know what? I'm gonna beat the hell out of you. It's lying. I can smell it. it. Smells pink. Sure. What's on your mind? And red. A little bit of red too. Got any idea who might have wanted to do Helen in? Everyone's got theories. I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's. But... 
Gefährlich. Oh, das ist auch. Stoß. 25, I don't need anything, just saying the crap. Don't need you anymore. Don't need you anymore. That helmet would be nice here. Don't need you. That's the fastest armor that I just got rid of. The nicest jingle pool. Ah, god damn it. No, okay, turn the heart back on, otherwise I'm blind. In here, let's just look around. Grand Ballroom. Ah, yes. Black hole birdies disappeared, you know. The poor fellow must be inconsolable. Oh, Bellhop is not his first name. Appreciates your patronage. Rizzo's cares about the happiness of his family. Phaser's Joyce can't say that. I was kind of scared to go in. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. She looks like she hasn't slept in a few hours, but that's a cool makeup job. The purple red. Can appreciate that. Oh, we did speak. Oh. Constable Caney, nice to meet you. I'm Ghoul Poo. We spoke over the ether way. Constable Maria Keen. It's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. Oh. What'd you get for me, Doctor? An extraordinary contraption. You'll love it. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Well. Oh. Holy hell, I can actually do that. Unbelievable. She has the same voice as Kelly, which is still on our ship. Long guns engineering. This looks like a scope modified with a computing device. I work with the materials to which I have access. Halcyon has no shortage of rifles. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. What? Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. What? So it's a magnifying glass? It's, yes. It's a magnifying glass, but an extraordinarily powerful one. It looks through the glass of reality itself. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but... I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. The discrepancy amplifier. Greetings, Inspector. Thanks to the half genius, half mad scientist mind of Dr. Goodnight, you've been granted the discrepancy. A handy investigation device for uncovering clues through readiness. Danos. Eridanos. Uh, I need to put it in a weapon slot. Damn. Scanning Iridianus for evidence. Holy hell, actually, it is. Okay, that's. I didn't expect that. To hatch Heaven's Killer, you need to use the dis b b b b b scope to reveal a clue is not visible to the naked eye. Once you have located some evidence, aim directly at it while zooming in with the scope, then press the interact button to analyze it. I did not expect something like that. Holy hell, are you big? Oh, but first, is the loot here. I can eat some Spectrum Brown. Eat it, not drink it. You heard right. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. 
Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. Oh, science has to you been designed with a model analytic system. What else can you do? The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy <laughs> amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. Oh. Enough talk, let's focus on the case. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired, but all she managed was a sticky bee. I figured it out. She wanted some boys. Likelihood of Helen using her final moments to spell the first letter of the food she was craving. 0.0002%. So there is a chance. Well, if you're so smart, what do you think it means? Now simulating conjecture in hypothesis module. Hypothesis. This letter indicates the name of Helen's assailant. Black hole boys. Yep. Correct. Bertie Black Hole Holcomb is a registered guest at the Grand Colonial Hotel. Anybody else I should know about? Accessing guest database B. The Grand Bell Colonial Hold. Hotel is proud to serve the following VIPs. Bertie, comma, Black Hole. Burbage 3001. Bell Hole. Bell Hole. It was the guy who introduced us to the murder. Make a note for this later amplifier. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved compliment. Splendid work, Inspector. I don't like your voice. Don't patronize me. Anything else? Oh, money. Nice. <laughs> Early improves. Early improves. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the grand ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Taste the dirt. Oh no, Captain, please don't taste the dirt, and I'm too late. This discrepancy amplifier, do the size of those footprints match anything you have on record? Footprint is a tailor-made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. Perception, I'm seeing some blue, purple berry in this dirt amplifier and analyzes. Excellent observation, Inspector. The following compounds have been detected. Purple berry residue, nitrogen-rich fertilizer, common grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purple berries can all be found in the purple berry orchards located not far from the Grand Colonio. Hmm. Well, I'm stumped. I'm pretty sure she was in the purple berry orchards. In fact, it's kind of obvious. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. Level up! Oh, it shoots! Why does it shoot? Um, skills, yes. Lockpick and then hack. Holy hell. My hack is slow. Yes, please supply. Dice palace. Oh no, not that one. Okay. That's not house in Helen. It's a double ganger. I can take a hint. Double ganger. Doctor? The Purpleberry Orchards. And a footprint. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. Everyone could have done that. I like a will with you. Ah, 
I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. <laughs> that's, that's a cool one. I like that. Uh, I'm only too eager to cooperate. Tell me about the body. What's the cause of death? My apologies, Inspector. I've not yet finished my autopsy. Come back later. Oh, I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. Oh. oh, it sounds like you enjoy being a corona. Corona? I've never heard that word before. Absolutely. Usually I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring or working on my automatic sprat peeler. Oh, speaking of inventions, I'm curious about this discrepancy. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Oh. What happens if I break it or lose it or s buy, sell it, most, <laughs> most likely? I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say, and I don't have an indefinite supply. What made you invent it? Hmm. I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. It's a need. Just as sprats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other. I feel the need to create. Come on, there has to be more to it than that. Ah, uh, Inspector, I'm sure you don't want to spend four hours talking back and forth about the intricacies of a science project. It works. That's the important part. Uh, it works. <laughs> there it is. The amplifier seems pretty powerful. Why are you trusting me with it? Because you're the inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. You could have done it yourself. Yeah, but why not just use it yourself? I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> God damn it. Before I could even read it. Oh, scratch your back with the amplifier. Yeah, that's me. Brilliant. Oh dear. Perhaps I was being a little over generous when I said brilliant. Confident? Passable. Yes, let's go with that. Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. Uh, you sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. I'm pretty sure we're done here. Okay. Explain yourself, Pavadi. What were you checking out down there? Oh, God. Kini? Something I should know? Tell me about your makeup. I'd like to ask some questions, Constantine. Are you asking me these questions in an official capacity? Does it matter? I was hoping I could talk to you informally. I appreciate the gesture, Inspector, but I'm on duty. If you'd like to speak informally, you may visit my office during my scheduled socializing hours. Please, ask your questions. I, I know who found the body. Ah, let's ask anyways. Norval, head bellhop. He was understandably distraught. I believe his feelings were genuine. He's a remarkably poor actor. Hotel security corroborates his whereabouts during the murder. I haven't included him in my list of suspects, but neither am I convinced of his innocence. Yeah, it was him. The B stands for bellhop. What makes you say that? 
I am a little suspicious of anyone who enjoys his job as much as Norval. He's also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. Obsessive passion can lead to irrational behavior. It's a fact of modern science. Any witness to the murder? If there were any witnesses, none came forward. Ballroom cameras were also offline at the time of the murder. Helen was very particular about having cameras on her. Security footage would have constituted documentary filmmaking. Can't afford that. Oh, so no witnesses. What about the murder weapon? There's no sign of the murder weapon. Whatever it was that killed Helen, the killer took it with them. Frankly, I'm having trouble imagining exactly what it was that killed her. Ah, oh, cool. Could have been a reptodon. You guys got reptodons up here, right? Law have mercy. I can confidently rule out a raptodon as the murder weapon, Inspector. <laughs> uh, it was the murder, I mean, the murder. Do you have any suspects? Spencer Woolrich and Bertie Holcomb are officially persons of interest in this investigation. I've mostly ruled out Mr. Woolrich, leaving Bertie Holcomb as my lead suspect. Let me rephrase that. He's your lead suspect. I've been instructed to turn this case over to your capable hands, while I continue to serve as a consultant. You sound a little relieved. Work is simple. People are complicated. The people involved in this murder are especially complicated. Mr. Woolrich was Halcyon Helen's professional rival. It's possible jealousy drove him to take Helen out of the picture. I apologize for the wordplay. Conversely, Mr. Bertie Holcomb was Helen's paramour. The relationship was reportedly dissolved. I can't rule out her murder as a crime of passion. Uh, Burton, Bertie and Helen were dating, but that doesn't make him a suspect. Mr. Holcomb was in a romantic relationship with Helen. This alone is not enough to make him a lead suspect, but he does play tossball. Black Hole Birdie currently holds the record for most non-consecutive blows to the head. His tendency toward irrational and violent behavior is well documented. Ah, oh, you mentioned ruling out Spencer Woolrich as a possible suspect. Woolrich thinks of himself as a serious and distinguished actor. He was frequently cast in demeaning roles, while Helen played the charismatic heroine. He has reason to be envious. I considered the possibility that Woolrich killed Helen in order to eliminate a rival and advance his own career. But my reasoning collapsed under closer scrutiny. Woolrich owes his career to Helen's dramas. Her death likely harms his long-term prospects. I'm struggling to determine a motivation for him, so I've largely ruled him out. Please, ask your questions. Anything else? Oh. I forgot to do that. No, not right now. Yeah, I need to check the clock. This must be already pretty long. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay. Oh boy, I'm already getting thirsty and tired from talking that much. Nana Spank. Best Spank. I want to see my sweet penthouse. I need to eat too. Always. I look goofy with the lamp in my hand. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. Why is everybody staring? Didn't nobody teach them to respect the dead? Oh gosh, is that Miss Helen? Can we see? You're too late to the body. With that one liner. What do we have over here? It's not stealing. I can take it all. Someone's office. Just, oh, just need to read through that for the quests. I don't care. I don't care about the text. Where's my bird? Those are elevators that I can't use. Where's my sweet? Hmm. There, checking the penthouse. So somewhere over here. 
what's there on this path gardens that's probably an extra entrance or exit security timeline discrepancy detected nearby okay So it's stealing in here. Oh. Oopsie. Sorry. I'm sorry, sir. But while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspect. Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Right. You happen to have my room key? Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, Inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last <sighs> guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the elevator in the lobby and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. Oh, I need access to the VIP guest floor. I'd love to, Inspector, but I don't really have the authority. Moreover, the guests were promised exclusivity. If I let you up there, I'll never hear the end of it. Oh, boy. Oh, it looks like you dropped these. Oh, how careless of me. Actually, that's not the only way I was careless. I just remembered you have VIP access rights. As a... a special guest of Slug. Smart girl. Let me just set you up with VIP guest floor access. Done. You can now come and go as you please. Good. Good. I don't need money. Right. I'm rich. The Grand Colonial sure is... interesting. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please, allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. How does this place fit into the lifetime employment strategy? Anything special about double levels? Most certainly. All the important folks can be found in the utmost parts of the hotel. You can hardly walk three feet without bumping into a tossball great or a bored exec. Though maybe don't bump into them. Could be harmful to your health. More to their health. What does the penthouse have to offer? Twice the size of the next biggest room, and kit it out with any amenity you want, as well as many that you won't. Best to enjoy it while you can, Inspector. Typically, the only people who can afford the penthouse suite have enough bits to suffocate everyone on Terra 2. Also, please inform me if Woolridge gives you a hard time about getting a better room than his. Don't tell him I said this, but everyone on staff wants to strangle him. I'll do it for you. No, no, no one seems to talk much about the lower levels of the hotel. Who would be interested in a staff-only area? Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath a Rizzo's plant, either. Hmm. The Ever had a nice walk of fry there. Ever. Oh, I guess you don't lump yourself in with the other workers. Oh no, Inspector, sir. I live down there, too. But that doesn't mean I plan to abide in the bowels of the Grand Colonial forever. The best thing about Sublight compared to other organizations is the potential for upward mobility. We bottom rungers get in, do our job, do it well, then move up and on. This is but one rung on the grand ladder of life, you see? You already deserve a promotion. That's enough of I when I see the other options. Uh... You can honestly, can honestly tell me there's nothing of interest in the level. Of interest to your investigation? Well, I suppose there is that one door we're not supposed to open. But I'm sorry, Inspector, I'm not authorized to grant you access to any staff sections of the hotel. You'll have to find a way in on your own. I like if you're you. sure. I'm sure about it, yes. Oh, you got some high profile guests here, right? What can you tell me about them? 
My apologies, Inspector, but that would be a severe violation of guest privacy. We here at the Grand Colonial firmly believe that... All right, my supervisor just walked out of earshot. Some folks just don't understand the importance of gossip. About whom? And what would you wish to know? Smart girl. Ah, uh, Helen's ghost are worry. Do you have any reason to want it dead? If looks could kill, he'd have put her in the ground ten times over. Man's clearly jealous of her success compared to his. See, I'd bet we're the only two people thinking about him in all of Eridanos. And I only am because you mentioned his name. If you leave woolly cow milk out, it turns to curds. Leave the curds out, they begin to get stale, then rot. Woolridge is on his way to the trash bin, and everyone knows it. Either he's in denial, or he knew Helen would be checking out soon, judging by his increasing demands for a room upgrade. Oh boy. Whew. She's mean too and got roasts. Oh. Then we're gonna make you the new star, right? You deserved it. Promotion time. Heard Black Hole Birdie was staying here. Ah, uh, Birdie. Is he bigger than he is dumb, or dumber than he is big? I have a bet with a friend. Not sure we'll ever get it to pay out. Birdie used to be Helen's beau, though he isn't anymore and not just because she's dead. If I had a million bits, I'd spend every one just to learn what caused their split. I like her. I feel like she got the face and the voice of Ellie too, which makes it even cooler. And she looks around like, where's my supervisor? Where is he? He can't hear me. Gossip around. Did you notice anything about Halcyon and Helen before she died? Look at her checking her corners. You know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on seemed. Woo! Oh, you're roasting. Was she closer with some people than others? Everyone wanted to be around Helen. She could usually be seen alongside Bertie or Woolrich, for obvious reasons. That's a shame, Inspector. What if Ooh. I wanted to know a little about you? <laughs> La. La. Uh. Uh. I'm a freelance captain changing the colony one high stakes encounter at a time. A dashing gunslinger type, then. I'm sure the investigation will turn out splendidly in your hands. Or at least Mr. Kincannon seems confident enough to believe so. You wanna swing by the penthouse that I've just gotten myself into later? Mr. Mrs. Conchurche Austin Tabit, those names. Does being on the case give us temporary immunity? Think they'll let us confiscate a few stray bits? Already did. Already did. Might be the same voice. Actually, not quite sure, I but I think so. This hell is gone. It feels like it's going against the laws of nature somehow. I used to watch Helen serials. She'd fall into mortal peril every couple episodes, but she always lived in the end. Big fan, I guess. I'm glad I could take you to see Eridanos. How does it feel? Breathtaking. Have you looked over the edge of the complex yet? Just watch the clouds turning. It's like an ocean without end. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just looks like clouds to me. It's more than just clouds, Captain. It's... a marvel. Did you know there are storms in Eridanos that last for centuries? Eridanos mm -hmm. is a hundred times the mass of Terra 2. Eight hundred times the volume. Ten times the diameter. We're flying through the tiniest layer of habitable atmosphere. Sometimes I can't believe how small my world used to be. My horizons were about as wide as the walls of Edgewater. Damn. She has a lot of things to say. They never gave Ellie a lot of stuff to say somehow. Ah, and look at you now, on top of the world. Yeah. <laughs> We've come a long way. Good job, Commander Pavati. And the next time, we're gonna get the end boss. We're gonna get the end boss, damn it. I need already another spank from Nana. 
What's more sweet? What's more sweet? Finally checked in, I see. I hope you're fond of the penthouse. It's pretty much the best seat in the whole hotel. You shouldn't want for any amenity you might find elsewhere. Should act as a better headquarters for the investigation than any space dust covered ship. That what? and you ain't got room service on a ship. You ever need anything, come find me. Even if you don't, you can still swing by. I'm always happy to chat. I want to check in girl in my room as a secretary. Ah, oh, did you know the victim? Oh, of course. That is, uh, maybe not on a personal level, but I'm one of her biggest fans. Even started an association of like-minded individuals. I'd lament not having anything to meet about anymore, but the newer tribe just ain't done it for us. Still, there goes my hopes of a Terran Monarch reunion episode. Ah, oh, they're all the celebrities, right? They are all the celebrities, right? Sorry, friend, but I guess you don't get it. Helen was special, had a certain quality about her, like she would really go out and fight injustice. You look at Woolrich, and no disrespect to the man, but you just don't get the same feeling. He reminds me more of a vacuum suit without nobody in it. <laughs> uh, don't tell him I said that. Now, uh. what can I lend a hand with? Don't say a hand job. From what I've heard, your affection for Helen was something somewhat extreme. I suppose you could call it that, but that don't mean I poked around her room or nothing while she was out. That'd be a huge breach of hotel policy. Besides, knowing Helen's athletic acumen, anyone who tried probably would have been found, beaten senseless, then hurled into the hallway followed by the contents of a garbage bin. Probably, that is, it'd probably happen, but it didn't. Uh, I'm just theorizing. It happened. It happened. I'm curious about you. How did you get to be a bellhop? Notice my battle-hardened physique, have you? Used to be in a mighty mean line of work. Been shot at 35 times. That is, um, I've been near people who were shot at 35 times. But to be honest, I never really enjoyed it, you know. It's one thing to tightrope walk between life and death every day, but for just a handful of bits? Nah. When this position came up, I jumped on it and made a lateral move from sublight to slug. I ain't ever looked back. Oh, got any good stories? Sure you've seen a lot of people coming and going. Stories? Huh. Actually, I think I got a couple now that you mention it. When I was first starting out here, I got lost in the lower levels of the Colonial. Just you not, I ran into a giant purple sprat. Of course, I'd been drinking a little that day. Oh god, I hope I'll find that purple sprat. That gotta be one writer. Oh, I don't care about those questions. Oh no. I don't know. Hello there, my inordinately esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode. What authorized floor can I bring you to? AI. Oh no, don't worry, lady. I'll get you out of there. Huh? I'm not trapped anywhere. Oh, wait, wait, I get it. This is one of Norville's pranks. Almost got me that time, Norville. Now, can I bring you to an authorized floor? Oh, I can actually go to VIP now. Bring me to the penthouse suite. Next stop, the finest seat in the house. I definitely did not pronounce that right. And there's the chingo in the back. Oh, Pavati's. Oh, my whole crew is here. Holy hell, Ellie. Why did you not make yourself comfortable? I call the big bed. Anyone wants to challenge me, we can play a hand of cards. No, we're just gonna cuddle. That's not my outfit. Me and Ellie in the big bed. <laughs> and the cashier girl, that name I already forgot. Dark matter chocolate. Lemon slap. Rather have Nana's bank somewhere. Damn, there's a lot of trash in here. 
You actually need to cook yourself? That's insane. Why is there a kitchen where you need to cook yourself? Oh, workbench, nice. I don't need repairs. I can tinker. I just lost money. We didn't invite the vicar, I see. Pavati. There's, um, there's no room service, right? Just asking. Why? Do you think it's strange that I kind of miss Ada? No. Everything's so soft and silky and expensive. Oh gosh, I hope I don't get any grease stains on the furniture. You think June Lay would like this place? Oh. Oh, probably not. I don't think she cares much for corporate comforts. Do you think it's strange that I kind of miss Ada? Okay, everybody has a few lines. You think they'll let us expense the booze? I'm gonna nick a few towels. They won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why did you give Ellie not as many lines as everybody else? Ah, uh, Neo Kumpavadi is more. I'm leaving my shoes on. <laughs> she still has the best one-liners. I call the big bed. Anyone wants to challenge me, we can play a hand of cards. Inspector, I understand oh. you've visited the scene of the crime. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. I guess there's 10 minutes more of talking here and I wanted to end it. Oh, actually, let's skip this most talk. I can't talk anymore anyways. Ah, agreed. Tell me about your investigation. <laughs> it was definitely a body. Also, finger stepped in something purple. Ah, I see. See, that's truly special. I'm going to have a word with Maria about your qualifications. <laughs> Here, I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. There is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly both. So he locks his doors. So he locks his doors the moment an investigator arrives. That's not suspicious at all. I agree with the sentiment behind your snide remark. Unfortunately, the Piraeus spaceport is Cedric's purview, not mine. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. It will be more so slow speed. Okay, Nyoka. What do you have to say? There is such a thing as too clean. We ought to break open a few bottles and have some fun. Make a mess. Live a little. There's clothes on the floor. This is a mess. Uh, even the air in here feels too sweet. Almost sticky. I do love all the wall space. So much room for trophies. Pigstar, slovenly. These premises are unsuitably disordered. When it comes to on-the-go cleanliness, SAM units murder the competition. Did you know the smoke from high society cigarettes is 10.07% more likely to leave odor and discoloration in fabrics than other leading brands? Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Oopsie. Oopsie. Damn it. Damn it. I just butchered that. Oh no. Helen. Where did we go wrong? Oh Lord, I'm so sorry. That didn't mean for... <laughs> Helen. I love you. I love you so much. Definitely wasn't him. Oh, I can actually sleep in here. I need to... Uh, messages. Nice big bathroom. Not very clean though. Some arc in the shower. Who doesn't drink alcohol in the shower? So I'm gonna sell that. This is an oracle let's play after all. 
as important as the permadeath rule. Are we gonna even fight something in this goddamn DLC? I'm not even sure. Oh, there's the vicar. The longer we stay here, the more I can feel my mind softening. Mm hmm. The opulence of this place is stifling. Ruth's appeal baffles me. She plays the same role in every serial. A stoic fixer, devoid of deep emotion, who will stop at nothing to make sure the rules of society are adhered to. What the hell is Ruth? When I joined your crew, I figured I was giving up any hope of ever staying in a place like this. Eridanos is a technological marvel, and they use it as a tourist destination to sell sweets and alcohol. Ah. They kind of just has the most boring of lines. Okay, I kind of stumbled across a clue here that I completely budget out of my system. By not checking it out and pressing the wrong buttons. Good, good. Anyways, this part is over. A lot of talking. That makes me super tired. So I'm gonna eat and sleep myself. Hey, you peace out.